In the last decade, a question emerged that we didn't have to think about for a long time. What is money? A concept so deeply intertwined in our daily life that we find it hard to define what it means. What makes a currency a currency? And is there a way to create new currencies? During this decade, we might ask another one of these society-changing questions. What is a country? And can we create new ones? After watching this video, you will not only have a lot of food for thought, you might actually think that starting a country is entirely possible and that you can do so. We are talking about the concept of the network state, an idea by Balaji Srinivasan. A network state is a highly aligned online community with a capacity for collective action that crowdfunds territory around the world and eventually gains diplomatic recognition from pre-existing states. Before we get deeper into what a network state is, how to get there, why we should do it in the first place, and even building our own version of a network state, I want to introduce Balaji. I know that he's not very fond of credentialism, even though he has a lot of credentials to his name. So here are some of Silicon Valley's big players describing the creator of the network state concept. Balaji has the highest rate of output per minute of good new ideas of anybody I've ever met. Balaji is a visionary and one of the most original thinkers of our time. Many have had the experience of hearing him say something, thinking it was crazy, and then a year or two later realizing Balaji was right. I think Balaji will be right about the network state. So I got really excited and honestly quite proud when his team reached out to me last year saying I've been identified as someone they would like to have as an attendee of a Balaji lecture series about the network state. To better understand the characteristics of a network state, we first need to look at nation states. Nation, state. Nation and state. We use them collectively, but they are two distinct ideas. A nation is not some artificial border we draw on a map. Nation is about community, not territory. The word comes from the same root as natality, which means something like from common birth. A nation is a community of people formed on the basis of a combination of shared features, such as language, history, ethnicity, culture and or society. A state, on the other hand, is the system of law and government to manage the affairs of a nation. This has three implications. The nation comes before the state. You don't need any land to define as a nation and you can have a nation without a state or territory, like the Kurds or Catalonians. The same nation can have various states over time. Network states build upon these implications. They are community first and land and laws last. However, and this is important, land and law does eventually come. They start with an online community, with culture, and most importantly with an implicit agreement, a shared moral premise. More on this in a second. This is where things get really interesting when it comes to political reform and improving society. This bottom-up approach has worked out extremely well in all sorts of areas. Most things that are big today started from humble beginnings. Think about Steve Jobs and Wozniak building Apple from a garage or basement, like so many early stage companies. Think about Facebook, which went from one user to three billion users, which is larger than any population of any country. Think about Bitcoin, from literally zero to 10,000 Bitcoin for a pizza to a trillion dollar asset. So we start new companies, we start new communities, we recently started new currencies, and we can also start new countries. Let's get into a more precise definition or rather a feature set. A network state is a social network with a moral innovation, a sense of national consciousness, a recognized founder, a capacity for collective action, an in-person level of civility, an integrated cryptocurrency, a consensual government limited by a social contract, an archipelago of crowdfunded physical territories, a virtual capital, an on-chain census that proves a large enough population income and real estate footprint to attain a measure of diplomatic recognition. The term nation is replaced with the term network because the nation is the network that forms online that is defined by a shared moral premise. This moral premise is what unites the nation and creates the national consciousness, not origin, language or ethnicity. By the way, Balaji gives a compelling argument here that the US is not a nation state, but rather a binational republic with red and blue nations underneath. However, back to the moral innovation. The goal of a network state is to improve, or at least change the status quo on one axis. I let Balaji run you through an example of what that means. It's very similar to a startup, right? A startup is all about focus. One thing you're changing. Um, let me give a second example of the one commandment. The moral premise carbs bad, that moral innovation. You basically implement like keto kosher at the border. You have, you interdict it, you take it seriously, okay? And if you really seriously take sugar and carbs bad, and you take that to the nth power, it changes everything on the store shelves. Like every every single grocery store, there's no cookies. There's also no high fructose corn syrup stuff, a lot of the prepared stuff, a lot of that stuff goes away. It changes every restaurant. 
They can no longer add syrups and things to their food to make it tastier. That alone is a lot, right? Changing every single meal in every single grocery store and every restaurant within these borders is a pretty big deal. You take the carb-free zone, you start iterating it, okay? After people lose 30 pounds, then what happens? Maybe then everybody gets equipped with a CGM, continuous glucose monitor, right? Or you start rolling out other quantified self stuff to the community. That moral innovation unlocks another moral innovation and another, and you start going from one commandment to 1.5 and you start actually building it out. Balaji calls it society as a service, like software as a service, which you can subscribe to and unsubscribe from. Everyone can leave whenever they want. It's not a cult. And I guess this is rooted in common sense. You don't let everyone into your house, but whoever is in your house may leave at any time. So we got the social network, the moral innovation and the national consciousness. This is all fun and cute, but where are we on the map? Territory matters. This is what it could look like when a network state develops. As you can see, the crowdfunding of land does not happen in one specific place, but all over the world. A decentralized country, similar to how Google has offices around the globe or the Bitcoin network nodes, or even existing countries, which clearly don't have to be one joint mass of land. I mean, look at places like Indonesia, which consists of 17,000 islands. This level of decentralization of a network state also helps resilience. It's somewhat hard to nuke a worldwide archipelago with a capital in the cloud. But sure, cool. Let's say all of this works, we crowdfunded some territory. What now? We are still definitely not part of the member states of the United Nations. Diplomatic recognition at first seems like the most difficult piece of the network state puzzle. But maybe it isn't. When you think about it, most countries are small. Some of them are really small. The majority of UN members have less than 10 million citizens. 20% have a population of less than a million people. And 10 countries have less than 100,000 citizens. Building a community of that size is not impossible. So scale is certainly not the constraint when it comes to diplomatic recognition. There is also not a fixed number of nations that are part of the UN. As you can see, the amount of memberships has clearly trended upwards over time. Just as we've seen the numbers of cryptocurrencies going completely vertical over the last decade, we might see new decentralized countries that receive diplomatic recognition in the future. Balaji's assumption, which has already proven right to some degree, is that sufficient traction in the cloud or digitally can give you diplomatic recognition on the land. So similar to how Bitcoin is now being compared to fiat currencies, we could have network states being compared to other nation states because the KPIs are the same. Look at the dashboard. We track population, income and territory in square meters. Network states can also be profitable through something like taxes. Again, society as a service. That's what you pay for as a citizen. Nation states can have an extremely high annual revenue per user compared to social networks, which are massive in scale, but have a comparatively low revenue per user. The question is if it's possible to build a somewhat more niche community with diplomatic recognition and a way higher affinity than a big mainstream social network to justify tax-like revenues. Then your network state achieves profitability. This affinity towards the community or network or nation and its moral innovation is key. And Balaji makes it very clear how applications and communities on the internet increase in this regard. In the 1990s, there were just page visits. In the 2000s, daily active users. So you register and stick with a platform like Facebook. In the 2010s, you include some level of ownership. Now holding a digital asset like Bitcoin is part of the game. So they are even more involved. And in the 2020s, we might level up the affinity again through digital passports issued by your network state. So while network states can be profitable, it's not really about making money. It's about making freedom and making more opportunities to reform politics very few people can become the president of the United States. However, everyone can start a startup. What if more people start communities, lead them well, and these communities turn into new countries over time? While certainly ambitious, you have to admit this at least sounds very interesting. A bottom-up competition with lots of space for experiments to select the winners over time that reform societies. I was also thinking about what my moral innovation would look like. Maybe something like Bitcoin good, fostering a Bitcoin circular economy, everyone runs a node, attractive opportunities for Bitcoin companies, etc. This place arguably already exists though. Other ones would be entrepreneurship important, reading good, or changing how public education works. Let me know about your moral innovation. It's all about starting to think of yourself and your community as a new country. Existing countries are also artificial collective hallucinations and social conventions. That's all there is to it. The network state is an idea that people will laugh at. I have no doubt about that. But honestly, we memed a new form of money into being within just a decade. Why not new countries?
And speaking of countries and decentralization, something that goes hand in hand with the network state is digital nomadism. I've been traveling the world for a while now, making this video from France actually, so to learn the pros and cons of the digital nomad lifestyle and learning about my story, check out this video next.